Hey, hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. It's another Red Pill Religion podcast, Red Pill Religion Freedom from Atheism Foundation podcast. Once a week, we do this on Thursdays. And remember, on the Freedom from Atheism Foundation, Red Pill Religion Week in Atheist Stupid podcast, we do not negotiate with atheist terrorists, especially atheist terrorists on Twitter who are just really horrible people. So, and in social media in general, we will not negotiate with them. When they lie, we call them out as liars. When they are frauds, they are, we call them out as frauds. When they are abusers, we call them out as abusers. And when they are terrorists, we call them out as terrorists. If you like the work we do here, please support our work on redpillreligion.com. We are, we are partnered with Freedom from Atheism Foundation and are raising money for them. In addition to raising money for, for us to improve these podcasts, to buy better microphones and podcasting software so that we can distribute our work, this work, fighting malevolent, malicious, terroristic, hateful, or just plain dishonest and abusive atheism, ideological atheism. That's what we do here. We're up to $120 on our fundraiser. Please hit us on redpillreligion.com. Please hit the link in the low bar or the link on redpillreligion.com. Hit the PayPal. We're trying to reach $1,000. It shouldn't be too hard. We're up to 120 and you will get better sound quality and see us distributed more places as we, as we continue to uh, uh, fight and expose the ideologic occult thug network that is modern-day atheism. Joining me today, joining us today, is, of course, our old friend, Deflating Atheism. Say hi, Deflating. Howdy. Uh, what's new and exciting on your channel? Got uh, nothing much. Uh, I, I, due to personal issues, I've, I've kind of been laying low, and and, and the recent uh, at, you know the recent purging that's going on is also kind of giving me cold feet. But I'll be back in the swing of things pretty soon. Man, that purging is scary. But that's why, and, and that's worth mentioning. By the way, one of the reasons we're doing a fundraiser is the huge censorship on YouTube, and there's a censorship problem on other social media as well. Podcasting platforms will give us the independence we need to keep doing the work we're doing. Uh, also joining us is the master apologist, or I'm sorry, apologist. Uh, do I keep forgetting? It's Josh Brister, Ch Ch Red Pill Team member Josh Brister. Hi, say hi, Josh. Good to be here. And also joining us is Nathan, aka Toad, our old friend. Say hey, Toad. Hey, hey. Good to meet you, sir. Oh, good to see you, sir. All right. So today we are going to do what we usually do on Freedom from Atheism, which is very simple. We're going to go and look at some of the better memes and the better uh, stories or more interesting stories that have appeared on the Freedom from Atheism Foundation page. Links in the low bar, links on the redpillreligion.com site. Go check them out. Um, so I'm just going to go through here. We're going to comment on them. This one they posted, I think that may have actually been a little too mean. I don't know. This is a, this is a this is a they're just making fun of Dan Barker, who is the uh, who is the I guess he's with the Freedom from Athe from Religion Foundation. Right. Um, yes. Yes. He's uh, with the Freedom from uh, Religion Foundation. I actually debated uh, Dan Barker and you can see that on one of our videos uh, on on the Red Pill Religion uh, YouTube channel. Um, I could really sense the vitriol he had for God, the hatred he had for God, uh, for Christianity. When when I was talking with him, um, sorry, I cut out for a minute or two. When that happens again, don't apologize. Just stay muted, okay? Go ahead, okay. Josh. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. I mean, all right. Is it, is, is there, there anything you can say because because this guy has some pretty extreme beliefs? I mean, does doesn't he argue for treating uh, religion as a mental disorder and, and and all that stuff? I mean, yeah, I, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he says all kinds of stuff. When I was debating him, it, he, you know, he wouldn't dare say that because you know uh, we we were in academic debate. So a lot of these atheists they they talk a big game. But when you get them in uh, academic debates, you know, the, their arguments, are, and, and I'm surprised, their arguments are, are not sophisticated. It's only when you get to s the level of prof like uh, professional academic atheists that actually teach at universities where their arguments are more sophisticated. But even then, when I debate these PH PhDs and these uh, atheists that teach at these prestigious universities, their arguments are still not that
that sophisticated. So, so yeah, a little reading defeats them pretty easily. Yes. Well, let's be honest. Uh, atheism is pretty stupid. So, <laughs> but we're, we're you're giving them a little credit, too much credit for saying they got sophisticated arguments. Well, well you got to be nice. It's all part of it's all part of the cultural Marxist project in the universities. It actually goes to a little before them, but I mean it's a real thing. The the Frankfurt schools and all those people who came to the US and to Columbia and all that are real and and they started the slow purge of Christians, getting slowly getting rid of philosophy and theology departments, slowly getting rid of any anybody who wasn't an atheist on campus. And it was done on purpose. And I, I fully am con yeah. I know that this is because cultural Marxists wanted it that way, that if you weren't going to be a cultural Marxist with them, that was okay. As long as you had no idea of God, you would be perfectly manipulatable. And I, I really think that's what's yeah. happened in most secular religion um, universities. Yeah. Um, one more thing about the cultural Marxism. It does seem to be an attack on the logos or the word. Uh, e. My e. Michael Jones really goes into this a lot. We've had him on, and we're going to have him on again July 1st, and we can't wait. Oh, really? We're having on E. Michael Jones again? That's right. Me and Andrew are going to interview him. That is really awesome, actually. Uh, what are you guys going to talk about? Um, cultural Marxism. Um, and we're, we're going to talk about uh, so the rise of social justice warriors, atheism, um, the pettiness of some of the arguments that atheism has and, and so forth. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I know he gets, he, he, he certainly uh, upsets some people because he's got pungent observations about the, 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 Jew, the Jewish people, but uh, he's definitely not an anti-Semite in my estimation. Um, and he, he's just filled with great information. And he's, uh, uh, so I, I'm going to look forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody who's listening to this, you need to really go on YouTube and listen to E. Michael Jones. This is a brilliant thinker. And even though you might disagree with a point here or there, he is a really brilliant thinker. And he, he really destroys cultural Marxism, atheism, and the, the whole historical background. It's really an attack on Christianity, an attack on the logos, that which was the center of of Western civilization for the longest time. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and uh, it's it's really no accident that that logos is where we get the word logic, which is uh, uh, I think part of the reason why things are so upside down uh, right now, and we're asked to believe all sorts of uh, bizarre, contradictory things, is because we, we've chopped out logos. Now, the lie that was sold to us was, you know, chop away at Christianity and we're living in a, in a rationalist uh, uh, scientific utopia. In fact, the opposite happens. And so I, I think that's no accident. By the way, Max, uh, kind of to uh, uh, go back to a point you made, is what you said, it's happened at secular universities. If you look at the philosophy departments of Catholic universities, uh, a lot of the times they're not any better. So, I mean, I mean, it, it certainly made its way into Catholic universities as well. Oh, yeah. Catholic universities have definitely fallen apart. Um, I mean, the whole university system is collapsing and there's mm. I don't know why, how anybody can not see it, although traditional religious colleges are making a big. Comeback. Yeah. Yeah. The, the whole university system is a bastion of social justice warriors. Now, a lot of it, not every department, um, really one of the last departments, the strongholds that is yet to uh, succeed. Uh, subside to the uh, cultural Marxist is the area of philosophy, specifically Christian philosophy, which there has been a revolution since the 1960s with the work of Alvin Plantinga and, and many others that have really, you know, def defended common sense Christianity against this cultural Marxist uh, philosophy. Yeah, although a lot of it is in libertarian philosophy, too. I have an idea that cultural Marxists actually encourage libertarians, um, especially the objectivist type. Anyway, let's keep let's move on to some other stories from Freedom from Atheism. I see they're featured our fundraiser. Good. Thank you. And they featured our video. Good. Nice to see you guys. Um, let's see what other submissions have come along. Uh, yes, this is actually not a new story. I mean, it's in the Daily Mail, and it was recently published in the Daily Mail saying that there's, uh, when they do studies on atheists, 
they find that most of them actually do believe in some kind of supernatural, some kind of afterlife, some kind of ultimate purpose, something spiritual. The vast majority of people who will self-describe as atheists will admit they believe something like that. That's not new, although it's yet another study showing it to be true. Yeah. Well, yeah. imagine my shock. Yeah. yeah, you cannot get rid of belief in God or a belief at the top of your hierarchy. It's usually whatever is at the top top of your hierarchy. It's going to be a God substitute. And usually, oh. if you get rid of God or the logos, you're going to fill it with money, sex, power, or fame, and those will be your God. And we've Legos. seen the, the devastating effects of that in Western society. And it also, but it helps emphasize what I've said many times, that atheism is mostly a psychological issue, because it is. The vast majority of atheists are men who grew up in, in abusive uh, environments or had absent or bad or abusive fathers. That's the vast majority of them, overwhelmingly. And yes. Gary Habermas and others have done research even showing that, that, that even of a more majority of them, most of them had a faith-shattering experience. Something made them mad at God or hate God and decide there was no God. Then, that's right. I just got finished reading... Um, Faith of the Fatherless by Paul Vitz. Great book. And, um, yeah, a great book. He goes into this. He is a, uh, a professional psychologist that goes into this, that most of the atheists the, uh, uh, throughout uh, history, the top atheists, have had this absent father or a weak father or no father at all um, and have you know, um, been raised uh, and they projected their, their anxiety or their hatred towards their weak father or absent father onto the cosmic father, God. So yes. they projected their hatred onto God without even knowing it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the comments, uh, Sai Tere holds out for your point somewhat there, uh, deflating. He says, yep, I'm a Catholic philosophy department. I'm in a Catholic philosophy department. It is the last holdout. They teach all the damnable crap here too in other department in all other departments. Yeah, I'm not surprised. And they're trying to kick out the decent philosophers. And they they really most atheist philosophers in colleges now are most philosophers in colleges now are atheists, and they're all terrible and they're all incoherent. And all those departments got filled with atheists because the department heads made a uh, you know decision decades ago to slowly simply not promote or give tenure to Christians, not as a stated policy, but just to get them out. So the people who created those universities are gone now, and they suck. Well, uh, hold on. There, there is definitely a lot of atheists, but there, again, there has been that revolution in Christian philosophy and in I philosophy know. departments. So it's really uh, Christian philosophers that are the last bastion of hope for um, our education system. Yep. No, well, so if any, I think it's also a matter of sometimes the, the, the emptiest wagons make the most noise. I mean, yeah, the, uh, you know, Christian philosophers may be doing important work, uh, but they kind of work uh, stealthily, I think, in, in the modern environment. Their, their, their results may pay off, uh, uh, you know, in the future. It may actually hit the, the, the kind of demonic level. By the way, uh, uh, Josh, I want to get back to a, a point you made uh, when you said that we have these idols that you listed – uh, you know, money, sex, power, fame, and, and all those vices. Uh, there, there is a, a, a an idol that we could substitute for God that I think is far more destructive than all of those, and those are the idols of ideology and politics. I think a, a whole lot of the insanity you see from the from the activist set these days uh, uh, comes from people using politics and ideology and the kind of uh, uh, group identities and the kind of outgroups and the us versus them dynamics of, of politics and using that as kind of a God surrogate. Absolutely. Yeah, I can, I can tell you from personal experience. That's how I used to think before I really became serious with my Christianity. I used to really have politics as my God. Yeah. I was the same way. I was the same way. And it could be left wing, right wing, libertarian, whatever it is, I was doing the same thing. It's a very easy mistake to make because then the cause, whatever you call whatever your cause is, uh, 
becomes what God's supposed to be. And most of the time, that cause will be your undoing one way or the other. Like, even if you're victorious, you won't. Then you'll be victorious and you'll be done. And then what? You know, it's just, yeah, I mean, I lost faith in it after Trump got elected. I was all like, yes, Trump, he got elected. We're going to God Emperor Trump. And then just, you know. No, he's another president. Yeah, he's an interest. Yeah, he's an interesting president, but that's all. Yeah. But by the way, Nathan, you're a little quiet, so if there's something you can do to, to up your volume, that would be good. Yeah, would. Well, you might want to speak up a little bit, but that's okay. Is um, it better this time? Yeah. yeah. It is. Glitch asked me, uh, Glitch asks two questions. Glitch asks one question. Why is Keon a terrorist? Because he supports uh, deplatforming people and banning them and lying about them while doing it. He's a disgusting human being. I hope he never comes back. And anybody who's his friend is a disgusting human being and a terrorist supporter. Um, any Wait, of you, uh, oh, Keon, what, what, someone asked who, about Keon. Keon is one of the filthy atheist terrorists who harass, lie, and, and, and hurt people just for criticizing atheism. And, um, you know, he just helps prove, it, it, I shouldn't have even mentioned the name out loud because there's dozens of Keons out there. They're all the same. They're into mass reporting. They're into lying about people. They're into misquoting people. They're into taking them out of context. And some of them, I don't know, not all of them, but some of them are into calling people at home, trying to get them fired, trying to get them to remove from their jobs, calling them just to harass them and see, psych them out, um, make them, you know, play psychological games, terrorize them. I know I've spoken to many of their victims and I've been one of their victims. So has one of my family. So yes, if you are friends with Keon, you are friends with a terrorist. If you are friends with any of the Twitter atheists, you you are, are an enabler of online terrorists. And we did post something about how we don't negotiate with atheist terrorists. That should have been taken hilar as hilarious and funny, but of course, atheists being what they are, needed to ban that because they cannot handle people terror uh, criticizing their, 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 their ideology, which is what it is. Okay, a glitch also asks, so I'm, if I'm saying that all atheists are mentally ill. No, I'm just saying merely 90% plus of them are men with daddy issues and mother issues and are mad at their dads. That's more than 90% of you of them. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not mental illness, by the way, that, but it is a psychological problem. One that can be fixed. Yeah. It, it, really, it, fixed, is, but, huh? it really is a psychological problem. Yeah, um, totally. Show me in, 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 in philosophers and psychologists, have really gone over this. There's lots of literature, far more than I thought before reading this book. And I recommend this book by Paul Vitz again, um, Faith and the Fatherless, uh, the, psychology, the Psychology of Atheism. It really goes into that. The, the top atheists throughout history, whether Bertrand Russell um, or, uh, you know, there's plenty of others. Sigmund Flo uh, Freud, Nietzsche, Hume, yeah. Sartre, mm -hmm. you name them. Um, and those yeah. are the famous ones. But let's be clear, because I heard some dishonest atheist cultists uh, try to say that the book is just a gen generalized, you know, guesswork at a few famous atheists. And no, it's also got extensive surveys of the atheist population. Now it does. It doesn't say that every atheist had a bad uh, father figure, or that's the sole reason. It says that there's a historic trend, and if yep. we want to be, uh, if we want to be, um, or if we want to use common sense, we're gonna look at these trends. There's definitely a trend with uh, men having bad fathers or absentee fathers and becoming atheist. So you, you can't ignore the evidence. That and autism. Well, That's yes, right. actually, yeah, yes. It goes through that. Yes, autism is another thing that is frequently tied to atheism. And in the autist case, I think the gentle, decent atheists are mostly autistic um, because it's really easy, I think, to tra channel autistics into materialist thinking, and that's what's been done to them. They've been indoctrinated in materialism and given a bunch of pat and wrote answers to things that they memorized, and they have trouble snapping out of it. By the way, if you are autistic and you are having this problem, I can totally help you fix it. I've helped more than one autistic get out of it. Once you figure out that materialism is dumb and that literally the universe runs intelligently and therefore there must be an intelligence behind it, You'll, you'll figure it out, and that at least atheism makes no sense at all. Maybe you don't but I can, Christianity, I, but atheism makes no rational sense at all. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, but... I can debunk materialism in like one sentence. So yeah. literally something came out of nothing. Right. Something, yeah, something comes from nothing. That's what they always believe. It's my favorite think... fairy tale. Yeah. Something comes from nothing. Yeah. And I even brought this up when I was debating the pro he's probably the top atheist philosopher in the world, Dr. Graham Oppie. I, I brought it up. He doesn't have an answer to it. Um, you can bring that up as much. There's so many of these things that atheism simply account, can't account for. Now, listen, we're not saying atheists are mentally handicapped. They're, they're just uh, taken by a false ideology. And the reason why we are critiquing atheism as a worldview, not the person, but as a worldview, is because we believe everyone is created in the image of God. And I want to tell atheists this, that you can come back to God, even if you've had a, a hard childhood. Or did horrible things problem. yourself, or did horrible things yourself. There's yeah. nothing you did that you can't. Yeah, you can come back to God. That's the great thing about God. All right, so let's move on to another story. Um, can I also just say a, a great defeater for materialism is, is the simple fact of consciousness. Yep. Uh, that, that consciousness does not have the properties of matter. And I, I, I read a really great uh, and very powerful and very simple argument along those lines which is, you know, uh, uh, the simple uh, Cartesian observation that, you know, we can be sure that, that our mind exists. But everything yeah. outside our mind, uh, it, it, there's some margin of uncertainty there. So, yeah. so uh, the materialist philosophy is, is why, first off, we're constructing a mental model of the world to explain the existence of our minds. A and... Uh, moreover, is that we're using things that we can't be sure of to explain the one thing we can be sure of, which is uh, entirely nonsensical. Yeah. So I kind of like that argument. And, and I wanted to say, deflating atheism, that the consciousness argument is a super powerful argument for the existence of God. Super powerful. Yeah. We can trust our cogn cognitive abilities to give us reliable information about the external world. Um, atheism simply has an undercutting defeater for trusting those cognitive faculties to give us reliable information. So if you're a materialist, there's no reason to believe what you're saying is true. Yeah. Um, if you're a theist, you have a good epistemological foundation. So I think the consciousness argument is a great argument against atheism and for theism. Yes, yes. And that's the thing, for, for all their good words about rationality, uh, uh, atheists have, have no basis for grounding rationality if, if, if we're just these meat machines you know, uh, designed to uh, propagate our genes, you know? Yeah, yeah. And the, see, the reductionists, they would reduce or... Uh, Hello? You cut out. You cut mind out. ...mind of mental capacities. So there's no reason to believe that we can have reliable beliefs about anything, much less about the, uh, about the external world or the belief in other minds or, or the belief in the past. There's so many things that atheism takes for granted. It's really not a serious philosophical worldview now. Nope, nope, it's really not. And more and more people are figuring that out. The atheist population is still rapidly declining. And one of the things that keeps happening, like, for example, here's another one, and this is common. Here we go. As the experiences piled up, the atheists I had joined no longer sounded dis so disinterested and broad minded. I had accumulated several classic and contemporary statements of non belief, and as I peruse them again, they seem more and more to contract life, not expand it. That's from uh, uh, an English professor and former atheist, uh, Mark Burland, Barland, who converted. And that, that, that's very true. And he's saying what you just said. They seemed more to contract life, not expand it. And this is something I have seen. He's seen it too. You guys just, you guys just put your finger on it. The atheist worldview tends to be a heavily reductionist worldview. It's one of the reasons their thinking patterns are so predictable. 
They eliminate everything they don't want to believe in. And they do it more and more and more as they go on in their careers as atheists to the point where they're denying everything that they don't already think is true. They're denying everything. And they talk about their open mindedness. But when you talk for long with any of them, their worldview collapses. They're incoherent. They and they are very closed minded. Uh, the average atheist is the most closed minded person on the world. Uh, only only the worst sort of weird Christian fundamentalists can match them for closed mindedness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to quote uh, something from Shakespeare in, in Hamlet. In, uh, in Hamlet, he says, there's more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. And I think it, that goes to atheism. There's there's more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in an atheistic worldview. Um, they don't take into account history or philosophy. And I think that's the real Achilles heel of atheism. It's almost like uh, living in a, in a box by yourself and dealing with pure logic. And we know Immanuel Kant really critiqued that viewpoint in his critique of pure reason. So um, anyway, I've been talking enough. I'm sorry, guys. That's all right. Here's a good one, slagging off on Richard Dawkins, who's, I, I'm surprised he's even still alive, live, but uh, I, I love how they find this. Here's, here's Richard Dawkins giving the standard atheist belief, which is that there is no good and evil. The universe that we have observed has precisely the properties we should expect if there is at bottom no design, no purpose, no evil, no good, nothing but pitiless indifference. He's mistaken on that, but that's what he believes. But then you hear him in other contexts. Here's another one. I think a case can, can be made that faith is one of the world's great evils, comparable to the smallpox virus, but harder to eradicate. Um, so he does believe in evil. He just believes anybody who doesn't believe as he, is, he does in atheism is evil. It's, ah. Uh, note, note well, note well the, the, the uh, pathological language he uses there. Uh, uh, can you put that back up? Uh, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Um, yes, I would definitely call that pathological Nazi type language. Yeah, comparable to the smallpox virus. So uh, when you have an epidemic, uh, what do you do? You, you, you try to eradicate it. And this is the exact kind of logic that, that the tyrannical atheist regimes have used to stamp out uh, religious belief. And when they can't do it through propaganda, they do it through brute force. Uh, not If they can't eliminate the beliefs, then they just eliminate the believers. So uh, there is a straight line from that kind of pathological, you know, uh, uh, epidemiological uh, uh, language to mass genocide, basically. So, so you need to watch out. Oh, there is a definite straight line between language like That's this and true. genocide. And it's happened many times. Um, and, and this whole atheist collective will lie and say nobody ever murdered in the name of atheism, but it's happened to millions upon millions of people and it's still happening every day in multiple places. China's the most obvious example, yeah. but it's not the only one. And they're doing it to Muslims, which and, is not acceptable, and, and they're doing it to Fulan Gong and Buddhists, it's not acceptable, it's not acceptable. Well, the thing is, when you've become That's atheist, what... you've kind of taken away your, like, if you're really angry at someone, you've taken away a major thing holding you back from hurting them because it's morally wrong. Mm, mm. Yeah, absolutely. And well, uh, um, uh, we have examples of this. So I, I do want to mention this one last thing because it's important. If you investigate the Soviet League of the Militant Godless, which was a propaganda campaign that also in included shock troops on the ground to beat people up and kill them and rape them, which is things that the League of the Militant Atheists also did, um, you will find there is a straight line between that and Richard Dawkins and Richard Hick Hitchens and Sam Harris, who all directly used material from the League of the Militant Godless and also used materials from groups directly associated from the Mil League of the Militant Godless that mil mil millions of Christians died from. He and Jews, by the way. And there's no way Richard Dawkins did not know this. So yes, he was a hate propagandist working when he when, when he was at his height. That's what he was, and he was paid to be a hate propagandist. Um, well, the the only good thing to come out of Richard Dawkins is that one South Park three parter making fun of him. Oh, that go God go episode that three part. Yeah. Oh, oh my atheism, it's great. And you know what? You can't find clips of that online anywhere anymore. 
What? I mean, it's really well. You can find, you can look, but it's hard. You would think clips from that would be all over YouTube. They disappear instantly, just about if you put any clips from it. Except that if you search for clips of that on YouTube, of that South Park episode, you will find clips that somebody altered the soundtrack on to make him friendly to Dawkins and friendly to atheism. When that three parter of South Park was the most devastating take of on on the atheist community that anybody's ever been done. I recommend, Science, damn it. I recommend everybody go look for that episode. Go, God, go. It's three-parter and it's South Park, so it's vile, but it's hilarious. Well, Nobody well, ever the most devastating uh, take uh, from pop culture, at least, yeah. Yeah, I watched it uh, a couple years back to celebrate the launch of Nintendo Switch because the whole shit was he's waiting for the Wii to come out. Yes, he was waiting for the Wii to come out. So we can put, what was that, about 2007 or so? I don't remember. Yeah, I remember being like six years old and my dad, the episodes were first airing, my dad showing them on. And then the sex scene between Richard Dawkins and Mr. Garrison show up. My dad quickly changes the channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, Richard Dawkins would never say those things to a professional philosopher like William Lane Craig in an academic debate. He likes to say this type of rhetoric in books and speeches, but when uh, when William Lane Craig went to England in his debating tour, um, Richard Carrier pulled out of his debate, and he was rightly criticized by atheist philosophers. Um, so take that into account. Yeah. Well, you know, well, Richard Dawkins isn't really engaged in the quest for the truth. He, he's mostly just pandering to his uh, fan base at this point. You know, they're willing to buy his books and attend his lectures. That's money in his pocket. I mean, on, on some level, I, I almost don't blame him if, if he just wants to make money. Why why engage in, in, in an actual authentic quest for the truth? Yeah. If, if, if and, yeah. Let, let me say this, too. Richard Dawkins is great at science. But when he goes no, outside you know his field, when he goes outside of his field into theology and philosophy and history, that's when he's really not speaking coherently, and his arguments are very weak. Oh, so, I, 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 you, you yeah. wound me so horribly when you say that, Josh, because that is part of Richard Dawkins's shtick. They knew this about him going in. This is a party line on him when they made him. He's a great evolutionary biologist and needs to be respected for that. No, he is not a great evolutionary biologist. And no, he is not a great scientist. In fact, all of it, most of his work on, 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 on evolutionary theory was proven wrong decades ago. Selfish gene is complete and total garbage, and he hasn't even withdrawn it. He has once or a few times uh, publicly pledged to update it for all the new findings in, in, in evolution and genetics and all that that have come along since he wrote it, and he's never done so. Do you know why? Because if you include all the things we know, nothing in the book, the selfish gene is correct. Nothing, literally nothing in it is right. And yet it's still selling and people are still like, treating it like it's science. It's time to take him off. This man is a pseudoscientist. Not only, yeah. is, not only is selfish gene completely debunked, and I mean completely debunked scientifically. It has no scientific validity among evolutionists. Um, among atheist evolutionists, they give it no credibility because it has none. He also advanced a pseudoscience theory called the memetic theory, which sounds like a similarly named theory, which held... In fact, literally, that religion was a mind virus, and that if you could stamp out religious yeah. belief, there would be believers. There would be no more religious belief if you treated it like a mind virus. He tried for more than twenty years to prove this scientifically, and eventually withdrew it because it had no merit at all. He's a pseudoscientist. Never give him an inch. He's not good as a scientist. If you read Richard Dawkins on evolution, you will become a way ignorant and stupid on evolution because well, you believe I'm things that to, are wrong. I'm trying I'm, to be charitable right don't now. Don't ever do that uh, again because, oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to, I'm yelling too much, but I love science so much. I love science so much. It's my favorite topic. I can name all the great scientists who are my heroes. And Richard Dawkins is filth as a scientist. Well, let, let me just say this. I think we can agree on this. When he delves into subjects outside of his narrow 
um, Field, he's, scholarly yeah, he's, understanding. He is atrocious when he yeah. goes into philosophy or history or theology or any other branch, psychology, anything. He he I, is way out of his depth. This is it, tr- true of all the professional atheists. This is true of every single one of them, except maybe Dan Dennett, Daniel Dennett, and maybe maybe Stephen Hawking. Um, something, but virtually something about, all, something, about Daniel, something about Daniel Dennett. He is a respectable um, respectable scholar. I hope mm-hmm. that we'll I hope that we'll be able to debate him next year. Well, I hope you can get him. I won't be there because I wouldn't be able to be nice. He is he is a, a mediocre computer scientist of no great distinction and a joke as a philosopher. The only two atheists I can think of who are not jokes as scientists, arguably Stephen Hawking, um, uh, arguably, who was the other one I just named? Um, there are very few of them. Richard Dawkins is not a great evolutionarist. Uh, you got all these frauds with PhDs running around. King Crocodile with his decades out of date physics degree teaching people wrong things about evolution um, that are contrary to standard think teaching on evolution now. He's not real great on, on, on physics either. He's decades out of date. Um, Digital Hammurabi runs around with his completely irrelevant degree well, in Assyria. Let, let, let me finish! His completely irrelevant right. degree in Assyriology and pretending that makes him an expert in biblical exegesis. You have, you know, Neil Tyson, who's never done anything meaningful in science. You have uh, Lawrence Krauss, who, again, a total fraud as a physicist, nothing valuable in anything he says. His fellow physicists consider him a joke. I think it's important to start calling out, not calling these people great scientists, because almost none of them are. Daniel Dennett's not an idiot as a scientist, but he's not a greatly accomplished one either. I I hope you can get him on, but... I don't know. Um, I mean, do I want it? Do we want him? Ugh, you can talk to him. I don't want to talk to him. Me, me, me and Andrew will. Um, Dr. Dr. Josh, he, he is a friend. Um, Not to me. And, or this, okay. I understand. I understand. Um, and and he, I, I, was, I really liked how cordial he was in his debate with Dr. Brown. Um, and that's something we want around here. A cordial mm-hmm. dialogue with the atheist community. Um, you have that. I don't do that. I don't yeah. do that. I, I view them as genuinely a threat to, to civilization and a threat to my family. I, 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 I they're genuinely loathsome people. Um, they have different moral standards than us. They don't have any morals. They don't have any morals. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I was going to say something about Richard Dawkins. Um, I honestly don't hear about him much anymore. Like, I mean, I haven't really looked into much the guy. I hear more about other atheists like Sam Harris, but like. Richard Dawkins, all I've seen him, he looks like this kind old man who's just a nice old man. Yeah. I never have heard him say any of this crazy crap. I mean, I know he said it, and I know you brought it up, but, like, I haven't seen the clips, like, ever. All a I've lot of his worst clips get removed. That's the funny thing, too. Well, well uh, coincidence, yeah. coincidence, coincidence, coincidence. <laughs> Sam Harris at least uh, took away one useful lesson from uh, – <laughs> Darwinism, which is that you have to adapt to survive. So he, he tried to uh, rebrand atheism as a kind of you know West Coast kind of you know mindfulness cult or something. So he's managed to stay somewhat relevant, but I, I think Richard Dawkins just ran afoul of the whole uh, Me Too uh, social justice crowd. So oh. so they, they they kicked him out out on his ass. So yeah. Well, ah. Sam Harris was able to stay relevant because he debated Jordan Peterson. I think. That was part of it, although he didn't come off that great in it. Uh, but yes, I think I think, Jordan, I think Jordan Peterson gave Harris more credit than he deserves. Harris is the only one who survived. They were all part of a social justice program. That's the thing with people don't get. The four horsemen were all part of a social justice program 15 years ago. Um, and once they were no longer useful, they were jettisoned. Sam well, Harris the, managed to stay useful, but that's it. The four horsemen, they are not philosophically in-depth philosophers. Uh, just want to put that out there. No, not a single one of them. Daniel Dennett's the only one who's at least interesting. Um, so, and as we see, another PhD student turns to Christ. This is actually a growing trend, we're, 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 and, and I think we'll see more and more of it. By, uh, by the way, uh, don't you want to say something about computing forever? Oh, well, you know what? They didn't post it on atheist, on uh, freedom okay. from atheism, but I will send it, because yeah, Dave Cullen from uh, Computing Forever 
has recently announced that he is again a Christian. Uh, and and that is that is good news. That is interesting news for me on multiple fronts, especially because Dave Cullen was tied in with people who smeared my reputation and attacked me and assaulted me. And he knew that was going on during Gamergate days. I don't necessarily hold it against him, but I find it interesting that he and his, I don't know if they're married, his wife, his, his girlfriend, um, they, acknowledging criticism, acknowledging that, that, that his friends hurt people and deplatform people like his friend Sargon. Um, it's, it's, uh, I'm glad that he's found Christ. I hope he actually goes back and thinks now about what all yeah. of his friends like Sargon did to hurt people over the years. Yeah. Wonderful day to yeah. be Sargon, by the way. Huh? Yeah. What was that you said, Nate? Wonder, wonderful day to be Sargon right now. Why? Because I'm criticizing him? We've criticized him many times. He, he, no, he... no, because of his recent flop in the polls. Oh, well, he completely did. Yeah, of course. <laughs> he ruined UKIP. And uh, 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 those, the, the, when we're talking about Sargon of Akkad, the, the famous atheist bully and brute and bigot and Christian and Jew hater, um, Sargon of Akkad, uh, Carl Benjamin, that guy, uh, he ran for UKIP and he was rightly accused of being soft on pedos. And he was rightly accused of trying to trade in por uh, child porn and commit other crimes. The, the evidence is not disputable. And instead of just owning it, no, 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 no. Um, his fans will defend anything he does, but his days, his career is going to be over soon, I think, unless he changes. Anyway, um, I didn't want to talk all about him. But but back, to the, back, back to that story. I want to say how amazing it is that many atheists are coming back to Christianity. It, it shows the persuasiveness, the powerfulness of the modern Christian apologetics. That it also so many shows of these atheists are coming back. It also shows the complete emptiness and stupidity and vapidity and yes. shallowness of the scientism, the, the, the pretenses of science, the pretenses of being experts in evolution, which almost none of them are. And yeah, here's another story. I've mentioned this before. It says, despite claims that millennials are abandoning Christianity, a new poll indicates evangelical millennials are more likely to be engaged at church. Yeah, young people are getting really involved in church. And one of the, one of the myths, by the way, is that uh, the churches are, like, like the Christianity somehow is shrinking, but it's not true. The core base of Christians in the United States is unchanged in, in decades going back to the 80s at least, the number of people going to church without fail every Sunday or yes. pretty regular has not changed. It is as a percentage of the population or raw numbers. It has not changed. What's happened is the casual Christianity has dropped off. Hatred for Christianity has been normalized. But a number of people... I'm okay with the casual dropping. Huh? I'm okay with the casual dropping. I mean, they well, really... I don't know. I actually liked it a little better when I was in a, in a, in a country where most people at least had some deference and respect for Christianity. And maybe, now you know who the real Christians are. Well, yeah, the ones who are there without fail, is, that's a benefit. The ones, the ones who would have been casual Christians 50 years ago or 30 years ago or 20 years ago are now becoming pagans or occultists or getting into Satanism or getting into other religions. What they're not becoming is atheists. They're not becoming atheists at all. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Absolutely right, Max. And in the global south, right. Christianity, Christianity is exploding like no other in Africa, in China, in South America, in Asia. Um, so Christianity is not going anywhere. And by the way, Christians are having more kids than atheists. And, and so in a couple of generations, a lot of these countries like England or Ireland are going to be Christian. Well, they'll be Christian or they'll be something else. What they won't be is atheist. And thank God, because look at this story. This went up yesterday. I like the line there. This is what atheist government looks like. It's a story about how that's been coming out slowly over the last year that the famous Tiananmen Square, I guess, I don't know who, how many here are old enough to even remember it. I do. I remember I, what, what I watched. We I never did. found out what happened at Tiananmen Square, except we have the last few years. They, they, they ran tanks over them. Literally, that's what happened. I thought we always knew that. See, I'm, I'm oh, we only yeah, found that's that what in the last few years. Freedom. What, what we did not understand was the scale of the debt. And, 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 you know, there are all sorts of people you know, wondering what happened to Tank Man. Tank Man died. Assuredly, he died. 
along with uh, 10,000 others. And, and uh, uh, literally, and by the way, literally run over by the tanks. It took a few yeah. hours. They were, they were told they had an hour to leave. And then within five minutes of told they had an hour, tanks started rolling through and running them over and, and, and they were, they were barricaded so they couldn't escape. So they all had to watch and all had to eventually be crushed. And then they were hosed off and run and, and into the sewers. That's what atheist governance looks like. And I will not tolerate anymore some atheist goon saying, no, it is communism. No, it was state atheism that was done to do this. Um, this is an atheist regime, um, fully secularized, and does not hesitate to kill or torture anyone. Because that's I mean, what even if is. Joe Schmo, the fedora tipper, doesn't believe in that. Well, okay, he doesn't. Ne never mind. Um, yeah, I know. Is, no, they'll laugh doesn't. at it. They'll laugh at it, and when you give them evidence is true, they make excuses for it. This is why I say it's again, you can't trust it. these people, huh? It's always going to lead to it, even if Joe Schmo, the fedora tipper, doesn't claim to believe in it. Like, even if it's not even him who supports it, and like this is hypothetical, you know, like then eventually it's going to get to that. It's just human nature. Yeah, well, well, that's the thing. If atheists can't be honest about their own history, we can, why should we believe anything they say? You know, religion shackles human nature, and that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, oh, here's an interesting story. We don't have to, you know, we're, we've been in an hour. That's okay. We might go two on this one because this is fun. Notice this: atheists are sometimes more religious than Christians. This is absolutely true. The Atlantic was even willing to say that, and it's so true, man whether it's the transhumanist religion or the objectivist religion or the, or the Marxist religion or the nationalist religion, uh, that all of it is religion. And they tend to be more religious than the average yeah. person. Yeah, the demand for religi religiosity doesn't go down. It's the supply when you have atheistic governments that keep the supply down. I taught economics. This is what happens in human history. They need to read Rodney Stark's books. Um, this is clearly what is happening. When you get rid of God, you make gods out of idols, ideologies, money, sex, power, fame, what have you. Just like the Bible says. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Amazing how that happens. Um, well, imagine my shock. <laughs> well, let's see. Do we have anything... Um, do have anything else going on on freedom from atheism here? Let's see what this story says. It says, the national study on youth and religion found a fact that it is nearly determining in turning this around. Eight out of 10 young adults ages 24 to, to, to 29 who were still participating in their faith after being in high school had one thing in common, their parents. Yeah, and that goes back to what I've been saying all along. The, the children of... Uh, Here's an interesting fact. The children of the religious tend to stay religious. What the atheist collective has been betting on for a couple of decades now is, is that if they could make the kids atheist in the public schools, in the government schools, and in the culture, then religion would just die away. And that's not what happens. It's not what happens at all. The kids are more likely to be atheists for a while, but in fact, the majority of children of atheist parents turn religious. And the majority of the children of the religious stay religious, where they go atheist or something for a little while and they come back. Almost nobody stays atheist. Um, and yes, if your parents are, especially your father, if your parents are devout and they're good and loving parents and not bad parents, you will almost certainly stay religious. It's just a given. So the only way to stop it would be to take people's kids away, like they do in China. By, by the way, uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, William Lane Craig uh, responded to a, an article a woman had written and, and had posted to a forum of some sort, and uh, it was absolutely disgusting what this what this woman wrote. It was like, yo, I, I'm a, I'm a church going mother, but I'm I'm happy my child is an atheist. But when you actually read the article. Uh, it became clear that this woman had no respect for the Christian religion at all. She she didn't take it seriously, but but went to church because she thought uh, it would be good for the kid. And then the kid starts saying, "Well, you know, idiotic things like I believe in science rather than God." So, oh well, at least he's thinking for himself. At least he's making up his own mind. Uh, 
I have been love science. That idea did not come from the kid. It was planted in his head by, by someone else. But uh, kids are a lot smarter than we give them credit for. So if you're a parent and you don't take Christianity seriously, but but you make the kids go to church because you think it's good for them, they'll sniff through that in no time. And th those are the kids who, who are likely to uh, end up as an atheist, or at least an atheist temporarily or something. Exactly. Or, or who will make a lot of mistakes in their life and then come back to Christianity when they start reading and using reason uh, to prevent uh, society from going downhill from, you know, welfare and so many other things, taxation, so many other things, crime specifically. Start teaching your kid about God yeah. at an early age. See, yeah. I, I have no sympathy. Like, I don't care. Like, Christian numbers apparently going down. I don't care if these types of people are leaving the church who, you know, openly support things that are anti-Christian and don't care about what Christ taught. Like, Oh, I can see that. I can really like, see that. It, you know, you're attending the Pride Parade. You're doing this. You're doing that. It's like, get out. Don't, stop calling yourself a Christian. I'm with you on that. And I see, I like this one. This is a little change of a subject, but it relates a little. Um, Christianity harmful to women, quite the contrary, says, well, female apologist. I assume female Christian apologist. Uh, this is just one that gets to me. Christianity is not oppressive of its women, and it never has been ever. Never in its entire history has it ever been oppressive of women. Um, and, and the only way feminists can get away with that horrible, hateful lie of a claim is by ignoring, you know, because they'll say women were limited from doing this and women were limited from doing that. Yes, but they don't, they, they, they never ask what the reasons were and they never acknowledge the special rights and privileges women had that went, to, went along with their limitations because women had special rights and privileges that men did not have and men had special rights and privileges women did not have. It was a, it was a complimentary thing. Um, women had the women had and still by yeah. heart around the world have the right to have men protect them and provide for them. And they all depend on it, by the way. Um, and it's wrong. Uh, th th this will change us to the subject of the misandry, the yeah. inherent in all forms of feminism. But it's also anti-Christian bigotry to claim the Christians are repressed their women. They never have. Yeah. I mean, the, not, yeah. the whole notion of, of consensual marriage uh, comes from Christianity, comes from the Christian tradition. Uh, otherwise, women had no say in who they were made to marry. Yeah. The Bible is incredibly clear that women, men and women are of equal value and that women are very respected and cherished and, and, and that women have rights and that women are people. Heck, you look at the, the Catholic religion. Yeah. Well, there's probably more female saints than male saints named, probably. Yeah, um, I, I guess that's the way right. I look at it is like, I remember saying, like, I was kind of fighting because I'm joining the Catholic Church, and I was fighting with my former youth pastor about, um, like, women priests. Um, I, I guess my point is, I, he's like, oh, it's, you're, you're sexist or something. It's like, no, if it was the other way around, I'd be okay with not having a right because that's what God wants, you know? I take seriously what God wants, not what I want, you know? And you're going to find yeah. that, that for all the caterwauling, it's usually women who are more uncomfortable with the idea of female priests than men. That's another, that's another dirty secret. Um, well, if it were up to me, I'd have female priests. I'm just being honest. I'd have gay marriage. Honestly, I would. But I not, do you feel it's not up to you? Yeah, it's not sure. up to me. Okay, so let's think about this one. I'm not quite sure. It's easy to prove that atheism is a belief. Simply ask an atheist if the existence of God is obvious or not. If they say no, then that's their belief. It's not obvious. So they don't, um, if they say right. yes, they're no longer an atheist, yeah. Well, well, that's, that's their fudge when they say they merely lack a belief. And so, like, like uh, when they say, well, I'm, a, I'm an agnostic atheist, so I, don't, I, 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 I lack a belief, but, you know, I, 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 whatever the, the convoluted formulation is. So a person doesn't say they merely lack a belief if they don't know God exists, but they think there's like a 98% probability he exists. No, what, 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 if you're an atheist, that means that you think God's non-existence is at least more likely that, than his existence. Otherwise, you wouldn't be an atheist. It's not like, like I'm not sure, but there's a 98% chance he exists. 
No, you think that God's existence is improbable at the very least. And so then if you if that is a claim you were going to make by uh, or, or or you're going to imply by saying that God is comparable to Santa Claus or anything like that, if if that is a claim you're going to make or imply, then you bear a burden of proof for that claim. Exactly. That's exactly right. I'm, I'm gonna exactly my right. The historic that. position. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to inter interrupt you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you wrestling I think, commentary. I think it's a globalist plot that Santa Claus exists. Right? They've hijacked, <laughs> they've hijacked Christmas. Right? They've hijacked Christmas. They've turned it into Santa Claus. And I don't think you should tell your kids Santa Claus exists because I think that makes them doubt God in the long term because it's just subconscious. Like, I remember when I found out Santa Claus wasn't real, it was like, my world is crushed. It, it really? A, yeah, it was like a subconscious thing that prevented me from believing in God for a while. You or know what? That may, have, that may have happened to me, too. I actually, I resented the hell out of my parents for lying to me about Santa Claus. I was pretty sure they were, and I, I found out that they were, and then they got mad at me. And yeah, it yeah. did bother me. It did bother me. And it, it, it did affect my view of the idea of God, too, that they tried to push on me. Yeah. So I can totally see. I'm very against the whole Santa Claus thing and lying to kids about it. I'm very against it. I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah, we, I don't we mind. Take the hmm? Santa Claus gave me gift, but everybody, sh everybody would, you know, low-key know that Santa Claus isn't real. But instead we, you know. I think the better way to approach it for your Christian, your, your your kids, is tell them who the real Saint Nicholas was, That's and right. tell them and tell them of you know the, the the Santa Claus is kind of a spirit of Christmas and and That's giving, right. and I'll be Santa Claus this year, you'll be Santa next year. That I, I, I don't know. I, that's probably pulling us off topic, but I really spirit of Christmas is not gift giving. It's Christ. By the way, a hundred years ago, no children were being told about Santa Claus. I, I actually really? find really? American Santa Clausism a little odd. But anyway, you know, you know the entire appearance of Claus with, with the red suit and the big belly that all came from a, a Coca Cola advertising campaign. Yeah, and Rudolph came from a department store. Yeah. And yeah, most of the Santa Claus lore is fairly recent. Anyway, going back to the feminist issue, yeah, uh, the, the people were really upset um, because when, when they found out that Christian wives are the happiest of all, religious conservative women, that they, they, they have the highest rate of life satisfaction and contentment, the lowest rates of, uh, of, of, of mental illness, depression, suicide, etc. They have happy, stable lives. Um, they they report loving their sex lives. They, in fact, they, religious women uh, routinely show much higher levels of satisfaction with their sex lives than women who are slutty. It's just the truth. And a lot of people don't like hearing it. But gee, gosh, you think maybe those old Christian or frankly, even, you know, Jewish or other religious values that, that, that you know, Except not necessarily that the woman's place is in the home so much as that women, men and women are different and allowed to seek their natural inclinations. They're going to go for a fairly traditional relationship. That's what most women and men actually Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's going to be exceptions to things, but I don't think we the should make the exception the norm, you know? Something religion gives you is a, is a kind of a systematized and logical way of saying, all right, this is my job, this is her job, this is my job, this is, you know, this is where I failed to do my part, this is where she failed to do her part, whatever it is. It, you know, you're not just going on generic expectations. The roles aren't necessarily rigid, but everybody understands the basic expectations. And it makes yeah. life easier, not harder. Yeah, there's a, I think the there's whole a, like, red pill movement as a whole is basically rediscovering these basic truths, which is uh, the traditions are what they are, and religion is what it is for a good reason. That's you right. Know, reason these things, which which kind of bears up to common sense. But the kind of narrative we've been given uh, uh, largely from the academy is that the traditions are what they are to oppress you. And that's – you have to invent some sort of like conspiracy theory or some sort of ulterior motive to get away from the obvious fact that tradition is what it is for a good reason because it works. Yeah. Uh, instead of getting – or instead of saying that we live according to a patriarchy um, – Maybe the we have gotten to this point in history by reason, by progress, 
And instead of doing away with history and how we got here in, in the name of radical feminism or radical uh, individuality, let's don't throw away our traditions, but let's look at them afresh in a biblical perspective. So a common sense buying, perspective. Yeah, yeah. It's a common being sense rational, Christian yeah. perspective. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, hey, we've hit the last story um, that, that's been up this week since last week. So why don't we hit it? Um, if you had any doubt about what the tech companies are all about, have no doubt, whether it's Google, um, Amazon, Twitter, Facebook, all of them, they hate us. One of the stories that came out is that a number of sellers, sellers on Amazon, you know, merchants, were told that Amazon was working to stop all advertising of religious items and that crosses, Bibles, and similar products could be blocked because they are, quote, religious in nature, unquote. We, we have to ask if the, 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 you know, it says, are the atheists at Amazon and other tech companies trying to silence religious expression? Of course they are. And they have been for years. That's the thing. They're just ramping it up and getting more and more blatant and more and more obvious. My theory of that being they're losing control because statistically we know the atheists have been losing people for a decade and a half now. I mean, they're just going down and down and down. Nothing they do makes atheism more popular. In fact, it's as unpopular as it's ever been right now. It's just stupid. And the okay. total number of them is just going down like a stone, but they hold power in these companies. Go ahead, Nate. Um, yeah, I'm mean, just, atheism is stupid. Everybody, you know, you just listen to your gut. It's freaking stupid. Don't listen to your anxiety. Don't listen to your feelings. Listen to your gut, well, not your feelings. Or your, angry dad, or, your, or your angry dad or your absent dad that you resent or your terrible mom. Think for yourself and outthink your stupid parents. It, it, it is, if you don't have at least a basic idea of God, even if you haven't given in for Jesus or any of that, I'm sorry, man, you're lost. And you get down to stuff like this. Literally, they're so paranoid and superstitious, they're afraid or they, they don't want anything smacking of religion in their brave new world. They don't want an all powerful God because that knows God knows all of their little secrets, all of our little secrets. We're all sinful, sinful and uh, deserving of death. Um, but they, they go to a God substitute like a spirit being or, or uh, uh, an inanimate object like money or uh, power or fame. Or they try to make God in their own idiosyncratic image. You cannot get rid of God. Yes, that's why I have worship Arceus and I've captured him in a little tiny Pokeball. <laughs> well, even that would make more sense than being an atheist, to be honest with you. Can I, can I throw something out here? Uh, 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 just there, there's another factor to consider, which is that these tech companies have a huge and growing market in the Middle East of, of, of people. I'm not letting them off the hook by any means. Uh, of you know, a lot of of you know, a lot of Muslims who who are very, uh, uh, you know, antagonistic towards Christianity. So I think a, a big part of this this kind of tech silencing of Christians is a, a impartially to appease that huge uh, Muslim market. There's a Muslim market. Well, I don't know that it's that the Muslim market is that huge in the U.S. There's also, frankly, a push um, in Jewish circles to really popularize the Noahide religion. I've, I've met some Noahidists right now. The Noahide religion, um, uh, which I'm sure people, and there's people in the tech companies who are into, I know for a fact, in fact. Noahides essentially accept the proposition that the Jews are God's chosen people and that their role is to be the priests to the rest of the world and that the Jewish religious authorities are the religious authorities we're supposed to be listening to. And the sales pitch for Noahidism, and so basically it's called Noahidism because they have something called the Code of Noah or the, 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 the Code of Noah, whatever it is. It's, it's a code of behavior that all humans are expected to live by. If you, if you look it up called Noahide, N-O-A-H from, from Noah's, Noah's Ark, Noahide, um, you'll see basically they'll pitch it too because they'll say it, it's, it's like the Jewish religion, but you don't have as many as burdens or obligations as a Jew does. 
So, for example, oh, I can't I can't believe in that because Bill Nye destroyed Noah's Ark. It's not real. It's a fairy tale. Yeah. Um, basically, at first, it sounds pretty good because there's only as a Gentile, as a non-Jew, you are only required to go by these seven. Um, believe and trust in God. Don't worship idols. Respect and praise God. Do not blaspheme. Respect the sanctity of human life. Do not murder, assault, or slander. Respect family values. Do not have illicit sexual relations. Respect the rights and property of others. Do not steal. Respect the rights of animals. Do not eat flesh from a live animal. Responsibility for society. Establish a system of justice. And that's the whole Noahide called. So if you become a Noahide uh, follower, you will... Uh, believe that you are worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are worshiping the biblical God, but Jesus Christ did not exist or was a fraud or, 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 or a criminal or an evil wizard or something like that. And uh, you, you, you don't have to fall. You don't have to wear the yarmulke. You don't have the dress code. You don't have the eating requirements. You don't have none of that. You just have these. And you accept the Jews as basically your priests. And you go to a rabbi for your advice on how to live. But since you're not a Jew... You know, you're not required. I don't to think it'll it. ever catch on. Well, I think you I don't will. think it'll ever catch on. I think you will. Yeah, because religions that don't demand much, they don't get much of a following. Well, there is that. I mean, there's more to it. Those are basic codes, but I mean, they expect you to do things and live up to it and come consult with your rabbi and 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 all that sort of thing. I, I think it, I think it's I think it's a religion for all the people who've been taught to hate Christianity. Well, yeah, I mean, I serve anti logos. I think we serve the oh. ultimate rabbi, Jesus. Sure, I do too. That's right. Christian thinks he does. Uh, but I remind you, Red Pill Religion is still officially not a Christian channel. We, we talk to people kindly and defend all religions here. But yeah, I'm just saying, what's, I mean, all of these different religions are going to be coming. I think the Noahide religion is something that Amazon, that a lot of the social media companies are pushing. That's why I'm seeing all kinds of rabbis and Jewish sources offering. Bible lessons to Christians, and uh, you know whatever you think of that. Well, anyway, I, I, but in any case, we know anti-Christianity is just the way the tech companies in Silicon Valley are. But as somebody else pro pointed out on freedom of atheism here, other companies have an opportunity to capture that market if they want to. They won't. <laughs> well, there's evidence that Amazon, that, that Walmart might be. Not that I have any love for Walmart. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, they might be going ahead and. Uh, uh, Have you seen the meme where it's like they hate Jesus because he told he told the truth? I tell you what, man. I, I, the one thing I would wish as a Christian is that um, we either didn't have the sexual concupiscence issues that we do. You know, the, the urge I think to, to the sleep around, one. or if it would just not be a sin, Christianity would like be wildly popular. Yeah, but yeah, I mean. I think like we've lost so many good Christians. Like I know so many good people like my sister. I know, well, they call themselves Christians. I know people I've known from school, youth group, stuff like that, but they, they can't let the gay thing go. And I'm like, I, I don't know, like, where are you going to go when you die? I'm worried about you. I don't, are you really accepting all of what Christ has, you know, wants? Because I know it was very hard for me to swallow, too, when I was first becoming a Christian, that, you know, homosexuality, even if you're born with it, that's just simple. You can't, you know, do that. That was very hard for me to swallow, but I eventually did. Yeah, I well, I think, the conviction. I think it's also uh, uh, the fault of some Christians that they have an almost myopic focus on this issue, that it's like the only yeah. Christian issue yeah. there is. They got, they got, they, and they got, they got trapped in a tar baby on that. I, I see Christians falling for it all the time. They want to fight the, the homosexual lists all the time, and it's like now. It gets they, way too negative. This is something I'd say about Ted Shubat, and even to a lesser extent, to uh, E. Michael Jones and others. The there is a lack of Christian charity that comes from a lot of that. A lot of people who have, who are quote unquote gay. They haven't like chosen to embrace something evil. They've been taught and groomed into something, and um, you need to be nice to them. I uh, yeah. not accepting, but nice. You need to be kind. That's what yeah. I always do. Always be kind. Yeah, of course. You know, there's there's there, there's no reason to hate them, and and um, there's no reason not to accept them. And I, but it gets hard. And and what gets me is that people won't accept that it's a complicated issue. They won't accept, for example, that you're you're 
grow, what you grow up around can influence your choices later on, and it's just nonsense. Yeah, but it's, I'm tired that, of it because there's plenty of gay Christians out there, and I'm tired of yeah. gay Christians being assaulted and taken treated like garbage too. Well, that's right. Uh, Milo Yiannopoulos is one. Yeah, a lot of this has to do with their his their upbringing and suggestion, and you know, thinking yeah. that uh, gayness is a cultural thing. Just like atheists, we we don't hate anybody. We we stand up to to those that try to shove their uh, atheistic ideology down our throats. But we want everyone to come to a more a more fuller understanding of what Christianity actually is. I I agree, and it's just what we have to do. It's too bad we have to do it in the face of hatred and persecution and lies. But then again. The Bible does warn us that we should expect yeah. to face hatred, persecution, and lies. But Amen. there's hey, it's a lot thing. better than us, for than Peter nailed to a cross upside down. You know. <laughs> well, yes, and I, 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 that's I, right. I, yeah, and and so we can complain about it, but you, yeah. you know, it's just they're going to hate us. Okay. And let me just say one more thing: uh, this, all this rhetoric went on right before the French Revolution where yep. thousands upon thousands of Christians were, were killed in the most brutal of ways. That's why we need to stand up against false allegations and stand up against bullying. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And it's the French Revolution. It's what happened in Soviet Russia. It's what happened in China to millions of Buddhists. Um, it's, it's at some point, those who are in denial that there's anything spiritual at all and those who simply believe that we're just meat machines running around in a whizzing ball in space going nowhere meaning nothing that has ramifications including well if it's necessary yeah. to kill a few million people to build the new paradise we think we want we'll go ahead and do it it'll all be good in the end and yeah, that, that and was if, the plot of the bad guys from pokemon by the way one of the pokemon games and and if i wasn't if i wasn't clear the French Revolution happened because of uh, atheism. Um, the, the, that was a major driving force. They even built a cult of reason yeah. in, uh, in Notre Dame. And they, they, they did all types of atheist, outspoken, explicit atheist things. Atheism isn't just a lack of belief. It's the positive belief, the hatred towards God and Christianity in particular. That's why we need to stand up now rather than 40 years from now when it's going to be out of control yeah try 10 try 10 oh, try five. pretty much already I, out of control so, some of the people i've i've met including people i've known in real life i am quite positive would say nothing at all if i are if i were murdered or my children were taken from me for the crime of being a christian mm -hmm. there's people i know personally who i think would do nothing and it really chilled me to my bones but it made it clear what's going on here um, this atheist issue is a human rights issue and a civil rights issue. These people uh, want to control your thoughts and, and what you're allowed to express. And they want to, they want to control just what motivation you're allowed to have before you have an opinion. They want to inspect your opinion and decide if your opinion is okay before it's allowed to be part of public policy. And they think they get this automatic veto where, oh, that's religious. Therefore, I can exclude it. Did, did you see, uh, the Democrats were, uh, I think, uh, put a resolution that it's okay to uh, grill people on their religious beliefs or, or something? Right, even though the Constitution clearly says there's to be no religious test, clearly yeah. we have religious tests. My, my answer would be, well, then we really, really need to put a religious test in office, and we need to go back to enforcing that rule that says no atheist is allowed to have a government position. That's right. Hell, at this point, with the encounters I've had with so many atheists and their horrible attitudes and their hatefulness and their, their vicious uh, unwillingness to correct bad history, their vicious unwillingness to correct bad science, their vicious unwillingness to condemn atrocities committed in the name of atheism, but rather to deny that such things have ever happened, that's good reason for saying, you know what, you should not be allowed in any job where you're, you have authority over children, and you probably shouldn't be allowed in any job where you have authority over adults, if that's the way you're going to behave and act. Uh, um, yeah, and our founders would never have elected an atheist that they, they said that religion was a vital thing for building a virtue among the populace to make a republic built on virtue that 
religion in general and Christianity in particular were essential things. Yeah. And, and the fact that you've got atheists who will go around and will just lie about that. When they've been given, Jim, what's his name? Is it Jim Majors' his name? That bad, I gave him references to books, and of course, he's too much of a coward to read them. But that's because all professional atheists are frauds, all of them. Um, so that's me ranting. It's about time we wrap this up, I think. Does anybody yeah. have any final thoughts they want to get in? Um, I'll say, like, wasn't Jefferson pretty agnostic? Jefferson um, claimed he was a deist, and he did not like organized religion but claimed to be a yeah. fan of jesus yeah, he was a, he <laughs> believed that religion was essential um he just he didn't believe yeah. in the miracles but he was a very Jefferson big Bible. fan of jesus yes now with all of the founding fathers there are a lot of quotes that are either apocryphal or taken grossly out of context that are attributed to them now you'll often see atheists uh, mm -hmm. uh have one quote from jefferson where he said that christian Christianity is the most perverted uh, religion ever uh, that the world has ever seen. What he meant by that was perverted, which is put to an ill end, which we could all agree, yes, Christianity has been perverted in that sense. Uh, totally, he, didn't, totally. he didn't mean it in the active sense of, of Christianity is perverted. You know, he Man, used well, kind of trans yeah. Didn't so, Franklin say something similar? Was that... Uh, I'm pretty history. sure that was Jefferson, but all the founding fathers have have, have uh, uh, either apocryphal or, or taken out of context quotes attributed to them by by uh, atheists. Uh, by a, atheists, will do, atheists will do to them what they do to the Bible. Yeah, the Christian history. They simply lie. That's uh, right. And American atheists will put these quotes up on billboards. Yeah. Um, and no, well, no th one that's what that's what happens when you don't when when you. You, when you have a simplistic worldview and you only look at the surface level understanding of a text or take something out of its proper context. Exactly. And they do it on purpose. That's the number one thing to remember. They do it on purpose. They are organized. They have funding. I mean, they're losing money and they're losing funding and they're losing support. They're, they're probably losing paid enterprise. by George Soros. But they're all, oh, they're you can bet that by George Soros. Well, some of them almost certainly are going to have ties to Soros, without question. I would not be surprised, for example. Well, for example, I don't know for sure, but I mean, American Atheist is definitely tied to communist international groups going back decades. Um, that's Matt Tillahunty's group, basically, right now. Um, they are a commie front organization and have been for years. And they'll scream, no, no, I'm a strict libertarian. You will notice a lot of commies will lie like that and say I'm a libertarian, because libertarianism is the dodge they use. I'm not against all libertarians, but no, no, no. All right, everybody. Well, I, I guess we should wrap this up. We absolutely should. All right. And so uh, I want to mention again, thanks to our friends at Freedom from Atheism Foundation. We are partnered with them. Please go to the redpillreligion.com page. Hit the PayPal. We're trying to reach $1,000, raising funds for our friends at Freedom from Atheism Foundation and to upgrade our equipment and to get our distribution network, get a new distribution network that distributes our content more often and more widely to avoid the censors on social media, on free social media. We need commercial social media. So please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please tell your friends or enemies. Please do not negotiate with atheist terrorists. Um, there are lots of them, and don't be nice to them. They don't deserve Subscribe to Toad Used to Stink for more Living with Legos streams. Oh, yeah. Please subscribe to uh, Deflating Atheism, and please subscribe to – how do you spell that again, Toad? Toad Used, used to Stink, number two. Oh, yeah, nobody's going to find that, but if you send me a link, I'll get it at the <laughs> low bar, okay? okay? All right, everybody, please give us a like. Please. Can, can I brother. say one more? Hurry up! Li thing. Living with Legos. Living with Legos. Okay. Go All ahead, right, Josh. All right. Well, um, again, if you are hearing this message, you are the resistance. <laughs> okay, Alex Jones. All right, give us a like, give us a, like, give us a subscribe, and God bless everybody.